Hey everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video in Fire Emblem Heroes. Tonight we're getting the reveal of the next set of new heroes to be introduced into the game. A little shot in the dark here, but I think we may be due for some Three Houses units potentially. It's been a little bit since we've gotten our last batch of Three Houses units. There's plenty left to go. And then there's also, of course, the whole, you know, time skip Three Houses units. So who knows how they're going to handle that uh, at the end of the day. But we'll have to find out together. Let's go ahead and watch the trailer together for the first time. Just as a reminder, uh, whenever I pull up the video, I'm always looking away. I don't look at the title of the screen at all. And then I try to turn back after the splash of all the characters, so I can be surprised with all of you. Alright, let's get this started. I am looking away. Wait. Should I turn back? Now. Okay. Oh, wait. Wielder of Astra. I promised my sword to King Sel Shannon. It's a promise I intend to keep. I was just looking at some cipher cards. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a random tidbit. Um, anyway, uh, all right. So we've got a uh, a wielder of Astra, Imperial Astra. I want to see what that's all about. Luminous Rider. I am Altena, the daughter of Quan of Okay, so we've got a Pegasus Lancer Altena, or not Pegasus. I'm sorry, just a flyer. She's obviously got a wyvern. Uh, Earthly Gaybolg. Get out of my way. She looks really cool. All right, Hero on the Wind. My name is Sed. I was defending me. Sed, Infantry Green Mage. What's with all the Infantry Green, green Mages recently? Uh, has his own unique weapon, solo skill, pulse smoke. All right. Believe. All right, that. Ooh, look at that. That's a pretty cool effect. Keen Kin. I've trained plenty. What? Let me in on some Larce. She's a, a baby Ira. Larce's Edge, Regnal Astra. Okay, yeah, yeah. A lot of Astra going around on this, uh, in this banner. Okay, all right. So, new story chapter, Gulen Combi. Is that... I am sure I butchered that. Let's take a quick pause here to see if there's anything worth noting. All right, so it looks like no surprises. The Red Tome user is uh, one of the one of the Dark Fairies, right? Or one of the Dark Elves, I, th I think. I can't tell 100%, but I mean, it certainly seems like it. So doesn't look like we're getting a, f a specific free unit from, uh, from this batch. Let's keep going. Okay, so new heroes are here. Air of Light starting on the 9th and running until... I don't know. It doesn't say. They've they've actually redone the screen, so I don't know what the last day is, although I think it is on the calendar, although I'm not going to go take a look at that right now. Um, but let's keep playing, see if there's any surprises. They have had a history of some surprises on New Hero Banners, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case this time. So there is no immediate pre-demote, uh, no unit that's going to be introduced into the three or four star pool right out of the gate. So that is something worth noting. So regardless, looks like we've got some genealogy of the Holy War units. Uh, the banner is called Heir of Light, and it, it may as well be Relatives of Ira. Uh, we've got uh, Larce and Shannon here, both uh, both related and both wielding their own kind of Astra, um, which naturally means that we're going to have two uh, red sword infantry users in the banner. Uh, so this is this actually marks one of the first banners in a long time that doesn't have even distribution on colors. It is going to be weighted towards red, which means that red will offer the best chance of getting a five-star unit on this banner. Let's go ahead and rewind, take another look at the character's art as well as their skills to see uh, see if they're worth pulling for. All right, so let's take a look here. Wielder of Astra. I promised my sword to King Sela. Shannon. It's a promise I intend to keep. So I believe he is the nephew of Ira. He's related to Ira in some way. Uh, but he has Balmung as his unique weapon. Might 16 grants speed plus 3. Uh, if foe initiates combat or if foe's HP is equal to 100% at start of combat, neutralizes penalties on unit and grants attack speed defense res plus 5 to unit during combat. Okay, that's pretty good. I mean, it's a flat plus five to all stats in in-combat buff, as long as he initiates on the opponent. And even when he's enemy phasing, if the enemy has 100% health at the start of the combat, 
he gets that plus five to all stats. Neutralizing penalties on the unit is actually a pretty big deal too. I'm wondering if he's going to be kind of crafted to be more enemy phase. Obviously, I think more mixed phase, but um, it sounds like he's going to have some some formidable defenses and stats when he's when he's enemy phasing a unit. So so I think that certainly sets him up a little bit differently from uh, the the uh, traditional speedy sword users, the Myrmidons like uh, like Ira, like Carla, like Marita. Um, she, he, he may have more of a mixed phase role, although arguably Ira did have a mixed phase, uh, set, or rather one of her best or most optimal builds was a mixed phase defensive set, um, so that she could proc that Regnal Astra. But, uh, let's take a look at what his Imperial Astra does. So, Imperial Astra, it's a two cooldown special, boosts damage by 40% of unit speed. Okay, so it's basically a rebranded Regnal Astra then, so, uh, he has his own version of it, I guess. Imperial. Maybe it has a unique animation. I actually didn't look that carefully. Uh, steady Posture 3. So we have a Tier 4 for the Posture skills. Looks like if Foe initiates combat, grants speed defense plus 6 to unit during combat and inflicts special cooldown charge plus 1 on Foe, or minus 1, excuse me, on Foe per attack. Interesting. So that actually kind of folds in Guard into Posture. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, a guard is one of those skills that is is not terribly good by itself, or rather it's niche by itself. And they've started just tacking it on to a whole bunch of other skills. Um, naturally, I think that makes a lot of sense, because I think it's a great added effect. I mean, it's a wonderful added effect. To the extent that Shannon is going to be enemy phasing, um, this is going to be huge for him. Adding, adding to his bulk and his speed... Um, and also reducing the ability for the opponent to get special cooldown, all the while charging his own Imperial Astra. I mean, th th those are all good things. So the main issue being, of course, that it's it's a strictly enemy phase-based skill. So even his boss him additional stats on player phase, you're not going to see any additional stats from the A slot. So that is kind of an issue, but it's it seems like they're kind of building him around um, proccing Imperial Astra and doing monumental damage. Uh, his Balmon gives him additional speed, Steady Posture also gives him speed, which of course all folds into the 40% of unit speed that is the boosted damage that Imperial Astra does. Uh, of course, he also has Wrath for the B slot, so uh, at start of turn, if unit's HP is less than or equal to 75%, and unit's attack triggers the special, grants plus 10, grants plus 10 true damage, and grants special cooldown minus 1. So that is certainly a formidable combination. Imperial Astra is going to be doing a lot of damage. And then for his C slot, even Speed Wave 3... Just adding on the speed stats. At start of even number turns, grants speed plus 6 to unit and adjacent allies for one turn. So obviously that is an activated buff which stacks with in-combat buffs, all tailored to increasing his speed so that his Imperial Astra does absolutely tons of damage. So it certainly seems like a well put together kit. I'm actually really interested in the fact that uh, if the enemy has 100% health uh, when initiating against him, it neutralizes penalties on the unit. Um, penalties, I think, being all debuffs, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So all of those stat debuffs that you often see, those panics and everything else, I mean, that that should mean that essentially all of those penalties are neutralized as long as the enemy that's initiating into him has 100% health. I mean, that, that's a pretty big deal. Now, as far as tanky enemy phase reds are concerned that will proc their special and basically delete an enemy, um, you have a lot of armors out there that can compete with this this type of thing. You have Zelgius was the original. Zelgius and Iroh were basically the originals of that that kind of archetype. Um, they, obviously, more units have come out that have fulfilled that role. I will say the fact that Shannon is an infantry means that he can take advantage of infantry-based buffs. That That is becoming more and more of a powerful asset. Simply being an infantry uh, means that you have access to a lot of toys, especially special cooldown reducing toys. And in line with what Shannon's goal is, which is basically to, um, to proc Imperial Astra, I mean, that, that does seem like a natural fit. Uh, of course, being an infantry means he doesn't have to worry about armor effective damage, so there are a whole bunch of advantages um, to, to running this type of thing on an infantry unit, and he fulfills this role well. Of course, he's, he doesn't stop anybody from poking him to death from a range. I think what you may end up seeing is that Steady Posture 3 in the A slot, despite how good it is, generally speaking, uh, may end up getting replaced by Distant Counter. Uh, in a lot of instances, just to make him a, a, a multifunctional, multi-range enemy phase um, deleter, basically, with with uh, Imperial Astra. So let's keep going here. Take a look at his, uh, his art, as well as his special animation. His art's really good. Okay, that looks exactly like Regnal Astra, as far as I can tell. Uh, Luminous Rider. 
So here's Altena. She is going to be a Wyvern Rider, a Lance Wyvern Rider. Actually, I was uh, what I was saying during the initial run through of this trailer was that uh, I I had been watching or looking into some different Cipher cards opening. So Fire Emblem Cipher, the trading card game. And some of the recent sets have these characters specifically. So I'm, I'm wondering if that was kind of planned. Um, specifically, Shannon I th and I think Altena were both um, perhaps in the last set or maybe the last last set. I can't remember exactly. But um, but both of these characters have made recent appearances in Cypher. So uh, if that's any cue, then maybe we could look to Cypher for potentially new entries into Fire Emblem Heroes. But Altana's art looks pretty great here. I mean, she is a flying lance user of, of which we have no shortage. Um, so she has some stiff competition, of course. But I like the armor design. I think it's pretty sleek. I like the, the whole armor and the hip pads that she kind of has going on, uh, as well as the garter and the stockings. I think it works really well, so let's just keep on going here. See how they're going to try to differentiate her from, again, the deluge of lance flyers that are in the game. So Earthly Gable is a 16 might weapon, grants defense plus 3. In combat against an infantry armored or cavalry foe, inflicts attack and defense minus 5 on foe, and neutralizes foe's bonuses to attack and defense from skills like Fortify and Rally during combat. Interesting. So that's pretty unique. It doesn't work against flyers for whatever reason. I find that kind of interesting there might be a story-based reason for that um so unfortunately i'm not familiar maybe somebody in the comments could uh, could educate me on on why that might be if there are lore reasons for that but but at least from a gameplay perspective i'm, I'm not too crazy about that i mean i would rather it just be kind of a universal skill um it being limited to those specific movement types is kind of a big condition to me especially since flyers are so prevalent um so defense plus three seems to indicate that she's going to be more enemy phase based or defensive based um, and inflicts attack and defense 5 on foe and neutralizes their basically whatever activated buffs they have on those means that she's going to be very very tanky. She's going to do a lot more damage with the, the basically the minus 5 defense on them means plus 5 attack for her and of course minus 5 attack for them means plus 5 defense for her essentially more or less so that is going to add to her bulk overall. Reprisal for the special boost damage by 30% of damage dealt to unit Except in very, very specific circumstances and setups, most people don't use Reprisal for good reason, so that is going to get swapped out, probably if she is defensive for something more like Bonfire. Uh, Sturdy Stance 2, if foe initiates combat, grants attack defense plus 4 during combat, yep, uh, in line with kind of what we thought as far as her being enemy phase and defensive. Brash Assault 3 for the B slot? What year is it? I mean, not even Brash Assault 4? Nobody uses Brash Assault. Why would why would anybody use Brash Assault 3 if you're not going to at least... I feel like they forgot to add Brash Assault 4, and then they just kind of tacked on... They were like, oh, whoops. Well, I guess we should just put on Brash Assault 3. Uh, so, if unit initiates combat against a foe that can counter and unit's HP is great, uh, less than 50%, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. Brash Assault is okay. I mean, it, it, it for certain setups and certain builds, it can definitely be useful, but... Overall, there are so many more competitive B-slots, even for a defensive unit. If Altina is going to be a defensive unit, there are any number of B-slot skills that she could use instead. Now, she is a flyer, and that does restrict the ability to use a lot of B-slot skills out there, but even so, there's plenty that she could use. Heck, even having Guard on her for the B-slot is probably better than Brash Assault 3, so, so I don't know. That, that seems like a very odd pick for her, unless I'm just missing something. Um, so let's keep going. Missed opportunity to introduce Brash Assault 4, which I think we kind of really needed. Get out of my way. Her voice is cool. Alright. Next is Hero on the Wind, with a very elaborate attack animation, we have said. So he is an infantry green tome user. Like I said, we've gotten a lot of infantry green tome users recently. Um, namely, Legendary Celica, uh, Thrasier. Uh, just for some reason, I don't know, we, we've gotten a lot of them. Alright, so his weapon is Winds of Celeste. Uh, 14 might weapon, range 2, grant speed plus 3. If unit is not adjacent to an ally, grants attack speed plus 6 to unit during combat. Okay. So he's got his very own built-in attack speed solo into his weapon. Alright. Okay. Luna for the special. Treats uh, foe's defense res as if calculated, as if reduced by 50% during combat. Speed res solo 3. Uh, for the A slot, if unit is not adjacent to an ally, grants speed and res plus 6 during combat. So he's going to, when he's by himself, he's going to be getting plus 6 to his speed, plus 6 to his attack, and plus 6 to his res. That is not bad. Pulse Smoke 3 for the C slot, inflicts special cooldown plus 1. 
Pulse Smoke 3, inflict special cooldown count plus one on target and foes within two spaces of target after combat. No effect on special cooldown counts already at maximum. So a pretty good set, I would say. I don't know if it's that special. Again, the solo skills are mostly used in the context of Aether Raid defense, I would say, uh, commonly anyway. I mean, oftentimes it can also be used on offense just to plant like an enemy phaser in, in range of something. But I feel like the solo skills have kind of carved their own niche into being units that can kind of dance forward and leap forward into the enemy fray and do tons of damage, gale force themselves, things like that. So that's certainly not always the case. It's just an archetype that we see pretty often. It does look like he's going to be doing a lot of damage and he's going to get so much of a speed boost that it's, it's likely that he's going to be able to double on initiation against an enemy. I think he's going to be effective on the battlefield, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, he doesn't wow me. He's missing a wow factor in that he's not really bringing anything new to the table. Uh, if you want green enemy phase mages, we have so many of those. If you need green player phase nukers with AoE specials or anything like that, we've got lots of those too. Um, and, and those are probably, the, that's probably the best archetype for like a solo build that can run out and kind of do damage on their own. So I don't know. Like I said, he can be strong, I think, uh, but he doesn't necessarily bring a ton new to the table, um, so that's why I'm not terribly excited about him. But at the same time, um, he has his own unique stuff, at least a little bit as far as his weapon is concerned. So, so I'm not terribly like impressed with what he does necessarily. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I think that he definitely has the potential to be built to be very, very powerful. So don't get me wrong. If you like said, don't fret. I mean, I think what he has is good. It's just not, it's nothing like fresh and new. So let's keep going. We must believe. And this very ornate uh, wind animation. Pretty nice. Okay, Keen Kin. So we've got Baby Ira here. Um, we've got Larce, who is a an infantry sword user. Uh, Asatani Tomoyo also reprising their role as the artist. Uh, and her attacking art is actually the exact same as Ira's, uh, which is a, a nice little callback as well. So Larsay's Edge is a 16 might sword, accelerates special trigger, cooldown count minus one, okay. At start of combat, if unit's speed is greater than foe's speed, or if foe's HP is 100%. Okay, so they're starting to do this thing now with that dual effect, interesting. Uh, grants attack speed, defense, res, plus four to unit, uh, and neutralizes foe's bonuses. Interesting, so it's plus four rather than the plus five that Shannon has. However, she has Accelerate Special Trigger cooldown count minus one, whereas I think he just had speed plus three. Uh, that is a very fair trade on the part of Larce, I would say. I think that um, getting that special special trigger cooldown count minus one is, is way, way better um, than the alternative. So I think she made out pretty well in that negotiation. Uh, if unit speed is greater than foe's speed, so that's also the difference. It's not just about initiation. It's only if her speed is greater than her foe's speed. Um, it, it, by all accounts, it sounds like she's going to be like her mom and she's going to have a ton of speed. So I don't think that she's going to have too much difficulty in meeting that condition. Regnal Astra, again, a two cooldown special. Boost damage by 40% of unit speed, just like Imperial Astra and, uh, and her mom's Regnal Astra. Attack solo, attack speed solo three. If unit is not adjacent to an ally, grants attack speed plus six during combat. Interesting, giving her a solo skill. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad fit, but um, it kind of feels like they're tacking on solo skills to all of these units for, for thematic reasons. But I don't know if it really necessarily fits the theme. Uh, repel three for the beast law. So this is a new skill. If unit speed is greater than foe speed, reduces damage from attacks during combat and from area of effect specials. Uh, by percentage equal difference of difference between stats times four, maximum 40%. If unit initiates combat, foe is moved one space away from combat. Yeah, yeah. so we're seeing more of this combination of hit and run and uh, other effects. This one's a little interesting in that it's, again, it's a speed check. And then it reduces, it reduces damage. I mean, it basically increases her defenses. It reduces damage by a percentage up to 40%. Uh, which is pretty darn good. So once again, we've seen this condition before. Basically, if she has 10 speed over her opponent, that times four would end up equal, equaling 40%. So as long as she has 10 speed over her uh, over her foe, over her opponent, she's going to enjoy that 40% damage reduction, which is pretty huge. And again, she's probably going to be pretty darn speedy. So she's actually going to be kind of difficult to take down, to be completely honest. Uh, and then again, if she initiates, she moves one space back. So it's really interesting because those two things are not necessarily synergistic with each other, or rather, um, they don't necessarily follow through. They have different applications. 
I think that makes it particularly powerful in that it doesn't have just one role. Uh, I think the hit and run is obviously more useful uh, on, well, it's only useful on a player phase because it only activates on a player phase. Um, but then the repel is, is multi-purpose. I mean, or not the repel, the uh, damage reduction is multi-purpose. It works on both phases. Uh, and so it, it's not it's not a B slot skill that that's kind of honed in and focused and only um, only operates and activates under a certain conditions of either player phase or enemy phase. So that's going to help her maintain her bulk so she can get Ragnal Astra off and that Ragnal Astra is going to hurt. Uh, panic Smoke 3 for the C slot inflicts panic on target and foes within two spaces of target after combat. So the way I envision them using Larce is basically um, sending her into the midst of battle, having her proc Regnal Astra over and over again. She enjoys one, minus one cooldown, which means Regnal Astra only has a one turn cooldown. If she initiates on a tight knit group, she's going to inflict panic across all of them. So if they have any activated buffs, that is going to severely decrease their ability to do damage to her on enemy phase. Uh, so when they attack into her, um, she's also going to, of course, enjoy Larce's Edge, that, that, that effect, as well as the Repel 3. So she's going to have a lot of damage reduction, which means she's going to be difficult to take down, and then she's going to immediately counter with Ragnal Astra. Um, that's not unlike what certain Slaying Edge builds for Ira did, so it kind of makes sense that they would take, um, you know, chip off the old block. It kind of makes sense that they would borrow that from Ira and then give that to her. So let's keep going. Take a look at Larce's art. Yep. So again, she's she's ba basically baby Ira, um, <laughs> more or less. All right. So new heroes are here. Like I said, Heir of Light on the banner are going to be the two relatives of Ira. If that wasn't already obvious enough, um, both of them have basically they both have the same goal: um, is activating their special and killing an enemy. Um, they do it different ways. I think Shannon is more enemy phase based. Larce, I would say, is a little bit more offensive. But at the same time, uh, both of them are kind of mixed phased because. I think each of them sets themselves up in a different way. I think Larce sets herself up, self up offensively. Shannon sets himself up more defensively. But at the end of the day, their goal is to tank hits and then counter back with their Astras. So both of those units are really powerful. I, I just kind of question the need for them. Uh, if you have infantry sword users, of which there are plenty, um, speedy infantry sword users, Ira even, or, or like Carla or Marita, I mean, I was just going through... A list of them before, then you you probably don't really need these units. And if you needed, for example, a, a an infantry sword user that would proc their own special and deal tons of damage, like Zelgius, like Ike, like Legendary Marth. I mean, again, um, it, it's not necessarily a terribly unique thing. I do think they're they're kitted very well, um, so they'll they'll work right out of the box. And if you're fans of these units, um, rejoice because I think they're going to be good. So, but for me personally, I'm not seeing anything that I would jump in for necessarily. I'm probably going to be just using my tickets, crossing my fingers, hoping for the best, uh, and then moving on for the, and saving for the next banner. But let me know if you're excited for this banner, if you're excited for any of these units in particular. Let me know in the comments below who you're going to be going for, if anyone. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching and taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really, really do appreciate it. And until next time, let's protect those skies.